Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 8. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. The title of the message is Power of Persistent Prayer. Power of Persistent Prayer. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. The Bible says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that man ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was, a, there was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow traveleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, first of all, for salvation. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed on Calvary's cross to wash all our sins away. We thank you for the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, whereby we are sealed to the day of redemption. Thank you for the King James Bible. Thank you for the Bible in church. Thank you for the saints. We ask you now that you be with your preacher. Pray that you fill him with your Holy Spirit. Speak through him mightily. Lord God, open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us not to drop any words that are coming out from the preacher's mouth, but help us to hide those words in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. Help us to be better Christians for you and have good testimony. Uh, please be with those who aren't here. Be with them. Uh, help them to come next time. And for those who are uh, joining us online, pray that you be with them. Uh, bless them. Help them to get something out from today's preaching. And protect us from devil attacks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Power of persistent prayer. In this parable of the unjust judge, you see a widow who was persistent. When you look at verse 1, the Bible already says that man ought always to pray and not to faint. As a Christian, persistence or persistency is the key characteristic that everyone needs to have. The reason many people fail in the walk of Christian life, especially so-called Bible-believing Christians, because you stop being persistent. You stop coming to church persistently. You start partic stop participating, and you are not persistent in preaching the gospel, and you just become nonchalant, you become lazy, and everything becomes almost like a busybody in your life. When that's going on in your Christian walk, you're in a danger zone. You know, if everything becomes kind of routine, you know, good habits, good routine is good. But when it comes to spiritual things, you can't make it just a routine. There always needs to be some fervent. There needs to be some passion. There needs to be some zeal. Because it's easily transferable to become a robotic Christian. And when it comes to prayer, because I go through it, everybody tend to become nonchalant. Everybody tend to not think of it as a persistency that you need. When we see the parable of the unjust judge, we see this widow going persistently going after the judge, you know, who doesn't even fear God. And he answers her prayer. As a Christian, I wonder how great of a persistent prayer warrior you've been. I mean, do you actually really pray? Because it's a topic 
just like heaven, just like hell. It's a topic like reading the Bible, studying the Bible. Us Christians have to hear every so often because we just become like, how should I say? We just become like a spoil of food inside the fridge that you don't really take care of, right? Like some of you single guys out there or a single woman, I mean, you put like some food that your parents gave you to eat, you put it in a fridge for a long time, and then it, it becomes spoiled. You see like moles everywhere, and what do you do at the end of the day? Either you keep it there or you throw it away. But some people still eat it too. You know, they have a very good immune system, right? But prayer life is almost like that, right? You have to constantly open the fridge and you have to check it and you have to eat it. You know, people always say when you are eating food, you have to eat it, you know, with thankfulness and you have to eat it with fervent. You have to eat it with passion. Think about it. If your wife made you food, you know, if your mom made you food, if your dad made you food, right, prepare food for you, and then your face is like frowning, you know, you're unappreciative, and you keep on, you have this complaining face, right? You know, no one's going to get blessing out of it. As a Christian, when you look at your prayer life, you have to see, when was the last time was I really, you know, passionate about prayer, right? Well, some people just pray to pray. Yeah. That's not a good thing. When you do things just to do it or just to do a check mark, it's not going to work. You and I have heard many, many messages. You and I have been told many, many things through the Word of God that prayer is very important. Yes. It's a privilege, right? It's a heartbeat of any Christian. I mean, if you don't pray, you're a dead Christian. I mean, you could know A to Z, Genesis to Revelation. You could know every single doctrine. But you don't pray, you're a dead Christian. Right. Those are the Christians who actually goes out of their way and split the churches in half. Mm. Because they know too much, but they don't pray. Right. So they become very proud, right? They become puffed up. So you have to have a balance. We always talk about balance. And if we check our heartbeat through this, right? Yes. Or through here. You know, if you don't feel anything, you know, let's have a talk, right? Or you, we're going to take you to the hospital. But you feel the heartbeat, right? And if you are running, if you're exercising, it's like faster, right? Because you're doing something, yeah. right? When it comes to your prayer life, your prayer heartbeat, I wonder how it is. Yeah. If it, it, it could be super slow because you never exercise it. You never work through it. True. Yeah. I mean, people who exercise regularly... You know, your heart is always pumping. Yes. You know, it makes the blood flow, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Spiritually, people's blood is like probably clogged up <laughs> many good. times. You just don't pray. Uh, yeah. You don't pray fervently. Can you, I'm pretty sure it happened to everyone. You go to your gym, right? You do it, but you hate to do it, right? <laughs> if you do it and you hate to do it, and it doesn't really last long, right? I don't know, pick an pick a exercise from the gym. Uh, running. Yeah. A lot of people hate running. You know, people just want to you know, do the weights. Uh -huh. And then you hate running, you hate running. Then what happens? You stop doing running, yeah. period. Right. Yeah. Or vice versa, you know, working on the weights. You know, all you do is just you know, run and you don't want to do it. But your purpose was to do both. As a Christian, you have to check your heartbeat right now when it comes to prayer life. Like, we have first responders, right? And we have first responses as a human being. What is the first response when you're thirsty? You drink water. Yes. Right? Or whatever liquid you like to drink to not be thirsty anymore. But when it comes to prayer life, is that your first response? You know? It should be your first response any moment at any time. Yes. When you wake up, when you go to sleep, when you're in the middle of work, when you're in the middle of school, when you're in the middle of doing anything, prayer should be always the first response. That should be your first responder, right? If any subject comes up, you should be going to prayer. 
That's why the Bible has so many verses, right? Pray without ceasing. Yes. You know, you have to consistently pray. So as you look at your prayer life, it's not about repeating words and going through the motions. That can't be your prayer life, right? You and I always probably, we have like certain things that we have to pray, right? We have ACTS term, you know, acronym ACTS, you know, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. But is it really praising God when you are doing adoration part? Well, he said just a couple sentences. Ah, do you guys even know how to praise God? That's the question to ask a Christian, right? I mean, how do you praise God in prayer? You can't praise God in a prayer if you don't know the word of God and if you're not close to him, right? Throughout the book of Psalms, you see David praising God constantly over and over. I mean, Psalms 34, 1, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. So he's constantly praising the Lord, Amen. right? When was the last time you actually praised the Lord? Besides from in the you know, sermons and preachings, right. you say praise the Lord, you know, yeah. you hear some testimony, praise the Lord. But when was the last time when it was one on one between you and the Lord, you constantly praise the Lord? If you can't even think about it, if you can't even remember, you know, you've just backslidden, you know, good, good amount. Yes. You know, I think you and I have to be honest with ourselves. Yes. Especially when it comes to this prayer life. When it comes to persistent prayer, you and I have to be honest, you know. For nine out of ten Christians, based on normal, you know, percentage, you know, they don't have good prayer life. Yeah. It's not even majority, it's most of Christians don't have good prayer life. That's true. Right? You at least you try to come to church, you try to do certain things, but when prayer life is not right, rest of the things will just go away. He can't stand still. You know, that's why sometimes you don't see people anymore. That you're like, oh, wasn't he a such a strong Christian? Was, wasn't she a such a strong Christian? No. They don't have a good prayer life. There's no foundation to it. You don't come to church just to mingle with people. You don't come to church just to say that I'm a Bible-believing Christian. You don't come to church just because I belong to a local church. You come to church to praise the Lord. And then, you know, rest of the things, right? Find his will, get wisdom, get pricked, you know, get preached upon, change your life. But if your heart's not ready through prayer, then it's not going to work. It's like telling somebody who doesn't want to do anything, lazy bum, right? Yes. Hey, go out there by 8 o'clock, you know, tonight, clean all the, you know, junk out there in the lawn, right? The person doesn't even know what to do. They go there, they just move around, and they pick some trash there, but it's still a hot mess with leaves everywhere. They're like, I didn't know I had to clean up the leaves, right? You know? What about just stuff right there? You know, there are like uh, animal dungs uh, everywhere. They're like, I didn't know I had to pick that up. Like, you become like that as a Christian. When you don't pray persistently, continuously, then what happens? You become like a slower of mind when it comes to things of God. That's why a lot of Christians, even when you hear a soul getting saved, they're like, oh, that's good. You know? <laughs> There's like no joy and zeal. When something good happens to your brothers and sisters cry, ah, all right, you know, uh, go on. You know, I don't want to hear them anymore. Right. You know? And then you're like, ah, oh, you know, when it comes to reading the word of God, and then used to speak to you like as a live words, right? Yeah. Which it is. Yeah. Powerful. Amen. But now it just becomes just like just the words on it. You know, just a book. You know? When Bible doesn't have that much you know, effect on you anymore, it doesn't affect you too much, right? Yeah. When souls getting saved doesn't really stir you up, right? When the coming of the Lord, when you hear about the rapture, Second coming doesn't really get you going. Man, I could guarantee because I go through it. I went through it, right? Your prayer life is no good. Yes. It's down the toilet. 
You might pray, but you don't mean it, as in you don't do it with all of your heart. So point number one, you have to pray purposefully. Amen. You have to pray purposefully. Amen. You have to pray with sincere heart. You have to pray with zeal. You have to pray fervently. Amen. God gave you privilege and a lifeline between him and you. Why don't you use it? Let's go to Jeremiah 33.3. I mean, it's a famous verse. We call it the calling number to God. Jeremiah 33.3. Jeremiah 33.3. So think about your prayer life. Have you been praying with purpose? Have you been praying, right, with something that's really, really with your passion and zeal on it, right? I mean, think about the example that, I mean, Lord showed us at the Gethsemane, right? He prayed and then blood drops. You know, sweats of blood drops just fell. Yes. He was praying with purpose. Yeah. I mean, that's what you call praying with purpose. Amen. About to die for you and me. Thank you, Lord. For the whole world. Taking the sins of the whole world yes. on himself. And that's praying with purpose. I mean, honestly, you and I are such a lazy bums. Amen. When it comes to praying, we can't even stay on our knees right. for a minute. So you have to lie on your back and pray. Yes. You have to lie on your stomach and pray. Right? right? You got to find the best position to pray right. so that you'll be most comfortable. Amen. Do you think Lord, Jesus Christ, our Savior, when he was praying early in the morning, when he was praying privately, you think he was just lying down and praying? He was on his knees Amen. and praying. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Then why would you not be on your knees and praying? Who said it was going to be easy? Right. I mean, if Christian life was so easy, everybody could do it. If it was so easy to be a you know, Bible-believing Christian, everybody would be it. If it's so easy to pray fervently, Lord wouldn't say it at so many places. Faint not, because everybody faints. Everybody quits. Yes. You say, I'm not a quitter. You are. Yeah. You might not quit about the things of the world, pleasures of the world, what you like to do. Yeah, you're fervent in those things. Mom. You never miss your favorite TV show. You never miss your favorite meeting with somebody. You never miss anything, favorite thing that happens in a social media. But when it comes to prayer life, Woo. yeah, I'm going to miss it. Great. It's okay. I'm too tired today. Yeah. I had a long day at work. Right. I prayed in the morning. Why do I have to pray at night? Right? Lord knows. How stupid can you be? I mean, you're just playing games right. in your Christian walk. Yes. You eat every day. Yes. And that's, you say that's necessity. Uh -huh. oh. I mean, prayer is more than, more important than food. Yes. Then how come you don't do it regularly? Oh, school's more important. I mean, you, know, you, you got to just zip it. Yeah. Yes. Is school going to save you? Has no. school saved you? I mean, you do your best, right? But there's always a priority. Oh, work's too important, right? What's, what's more important? Work or spending time with the Lord? Oh, you know, I have to exercise. And you're like, oh, now, now that makes sense, right? You know, I have to keep my health, body healthy, you know, to be. But no, it's backwards. What if, what if you lose your health because you didn't pray? Yeah. Then what are you going to do? Oh, and then you, you're the first person who blames God and blames everybody around you. They weren't nice to me. You know, they didn't say hi to me. I, don't, I never heard them praying for me. You never pray for them anyways. But you always say, they don't pray for me, right? You know, people who always say people don't pray for me are the ones that they never pray for anybody else, right? How come you don't pray for me? Like, did you pray for me? And then you're a liar. You pray like once in your life, and you're like, I pray for you consistently. Ten years. Yeah. I, I thought about you Wednesday because pastor mentioned your name, so I thought about you. Man, such a, you know... Liars that you and I are. Let's go to Jeremiah 33.3. 3. The Bible says, Call unto me, 
And I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So, call unto the Lord, right? When you call unto someone that you love, your voice won't be like, hello, you know, yeah, how was your day? Okay, goodbye. No, ask the people who's gotten married recently, who's going to get married. When they talk to their mates, just think about yourself. If you're married, right? When you're talking to your future spouse, were you always talking like that? No, you were excited. Yeah. You were happy to talk to them. You couldn't wait to talk to them. Hours. Hopefully, right? You know? <laughs> and then you talk for hours and hours and hours, especially if it's long distance, right? Oh, yeah. You can't even see them. I mean, actually, te techni technology advanced a little bit. <laughs> so you have that FaceTime. You have, you know, you can video chat and stuff. But think about back in the day when people could only write yeah. and have to do an international call. Mm -hmm. Those international calls cost, cost a lot of money. Yes. It's not like, you know, all you can talk this day and age. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'd rather spend 200 bucks talking to someone that I love, you know, other side of the hemisphere. Yeah. Because I'd love to hear their voice. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll eat less. I'll go out less, you know, I'll cut off, you know, my cable TV. So just uh, I could spend, you know, have budget for that one. I mean, that's what you mean when you're calling unto somebody. When was the last time you were, like, so excited talking to the Lord yeah. with purpose? You want to talk to him about everything that's going on in your life, right? From work life, family life, to, I don't know, you know, acquaintance, you know, even like your hobbies or whatever. You talk to him about every little thing. That's why people could pray for a long time because they want to spend time with the Lord. That's why you can't spend too much time with the Lord because you don't want to talk to him about anything. Only time Christians honestly go to the Lord is when they need something. Yeah. Lord, I need something. <laughs> I need money. I need this health. I need this relationship, you know, I need this, I need that, I need everything. And then when Lord gives you grace and mercy and provides your needs, you know, even your wants, the phone line's dead. Yeah. You don't go to him anymore. You're not that desperate anymore. Right. You're not that fervent anymore. There's no more zeal, right? I guarantee you, when you're going through certain hardships right now, trouble with your health, your family's health, and when you're going through financial hardships, when you're going through, you know, relationship hardships, you are on your knees more often than not. But that's a very short period of time. You know, it doesn't make sense. Ask workout people like sitting back there. You try to do, you know, say, okay, I could bench press, you know, 100 pounds today, okay? Okay, that's too little for him, so 200 pounds today, right? <laughs> and then you don't exercise at all. And like six months later, all right, give me 200. Hey, you, 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 you get hurt. Yes. Yeah, you lost all your muscle, right? Christians, since you don't pray with purpose, you don't have any muscles when it comes to prayer life, right? right? You have no muscles on your knees. Because you don't get on your knees. You have no muscles in your heart. You don't know what to pray. You don't even pray for a long time. When George Mueller and you know, those forefathers of faith, when they say they pray like four or five hours, and then their knees had like, you know, marks because they were on their knees for too long, you know, that means they're praying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and... Christians, modern Christians, Laodicean age Christians, their purpose is to finish fast. Everything has to be instant, right? Yes. You know, like when we have Wednesday prayer service, I hope you're not the people who's like, when is it going to finish? You know, when is Brother Jay going to say, that's it? <laughs> or when is Pastor going to say, okay, you know, it's like, during those times, your brain works really well when it comes to timing, right? Oh, man, I've been praying for five minutes. It's hurting. Ten minutes. Oh, man, it's becoming extreme. 
or 50 minutes. I mean, some kids are already sleeping, right? You know, and they're like, oh, when, when, you know, few more minutes, few more minutes. And when he says, okay, you know, prayers finished, they're like, wow, you know, that was good. But it's the only time you do that in a whole week. That's the longest you ever pray. Uh, yeah. Because you're, I mean, you're made to pray. Yeah. Right. I haven't seen anybody who comes at a Wednesday service who doesn't pray when everybody's praying. <laughs> right? No, I mean, they all get on their knees and pray because we all are doing it. Yeah. You know? But when you're by yourself, I mean, do you do it? Yeah. I mean, when was the last time you went into your own secure place without any distraction it's just, it was just you and the Lord. You know, that shouldn't be once in a blue moon experience or occasion. It has to happen every single day. Yes. Do you think Daniel prayed like you and me? You know. Do you think David prayed like that? Do you think Apostle Paul prayed like that? And the disciples? I mean... Do you think people in third country, people who's under the dictator rulership in a communist country, do you think people pray like you and me? No. They're fervent. Do you think people who's in the war right now, they just go, they just get on their knees kind of, and then, okay, thank you, Lord, and then just get up. Okay, Lord, I knelt down once. Rest of the prayer I'm going to do on my back, you know. If you have bodily, you know, I mean, issues, completely understandable. But for normal people, right. I mean, you and I should be ashamed of the way we pray. Yes. Yeah. I mean, when was the last time you really, really put your heart out when you prayed to the Lord? When it wasn't your emergency, when it wasn't your dire situation. You shouldn't only pray when there's fire outside. You shouldn't be only praying when there's tornadoes and hurricanes, right? Amen. In your life. You should be praying fervently every single day. Yes. Man, is that too hard to do? Yes, it's hard if you trust your flesh. Yeah. But if you grow, if you are persistent, you know what happens? Your faith grows. Many Christians, their faith is always the same or gets worse and worse and worse. Going back to it, you don't have prayer life. You're not persistent in prayer. So you have to pray purposely. Let's go to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And you and I cannot give excuses of busyness in our life. That's not an excuse. There's so many people who does a lot more than you and me. They're construction workers, laborers, you know. They're mothers of 10 children. Yes. They pray. They pray fervently. They pray on their knees for hours. But you and I, oh, I had a tough day at work. My back's aching. You know, my arm's aching. You know, my nails are hurting, right? My hair feels like woozy. <laughs> and you give all kinds of excuses and you stop praying. You will never grow as a Christian. You will. Never grow. Instead, you'll just go backslide yes. continuously. And then you're not going to be persistent Christian. You're like, ah, you know, and there's one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to come to church all the time. You're not. Look around you. Without the right reasons, you know, health, you know, something else going on, people just stop coming or decide not to continue their faith because they're not persistent. Yes. You know? I mean, you could be like that. I could be like that. Yes. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. We're going to look at 5 and 6. The Bible says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. <laughs> but that's so true. We, we're such a hypocrite, right? We only pray hard during Wednesday nights. We only pray hard during Sundays. Yes. Man, but at home, like, you don't pray at all. Right. And... You don't have to tell me because you don't. Yes. Right? We could play the 24 hour life, right? Yes. You know? Maybe some of you guys might pray five minutes. You're better than the majority of the people. 10 minutes, wow. 15, 
man, you're top three, right? <laughs> Dirty, you might take the you know, crown. That's how lazy people are. They don't care about this. But hypocrites, 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 you're like, I'm praying for you, brother. I'm praying for you, sister. You're a liar. Yeah. You know, one time someone gave me, hey, man, he woke me up. Some brother dropped by. I don't know if he was, he's not here. I don't even remember their face, right? They're like, you know, okay, would you pray for me? I said, okay, I'm going to pray for you all the time. He goes, you're a liar. You know, you're not going to pray for me all the time, right? And it's true, right? A lot of people, like, they don't pray for each other all the time. Mm -hmm. But you got to pray every time they are in your remembrance. Yeah. You got to pray every time you think about them, right? Yes. That's how you're going to do it. So stop telling each other, I'm praying for you all the time. What what's all the time mean? Is that once a year? You know, once every two years, right? Just do your best to pray for each other. Let's continue. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets. I mean, we see a bunch of calls out there always on the streets, right? Holding their literature, looking holy, right. trying to be. Mm -hmm. Or wearing the nice shirt and always running around in their bicycles. Maybe motorcycles now, I don't know. E yeah, yeah. E bikes, e bikes, right? <laughs> Just trying to look holy, right? But that's all hypocrite. They're hypocrites. Yes. I mean, we don't show it. We're inward hypocrites. They're outward hypocrites. Yes. Let's continue. Amen. That they may be seen of man. Fairly I say unto you, they have their reward. Look at verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. Again, have a secure place, you know, wherever you are, at home, somewhere where you could have a clear mind, clear heart, where you could spend time with the Lord. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So you and I have to pray with purpose, right? You know, when people have purpose, their life changes, right? Just, just an example, you know. If someone realizes that they're too big when it comes to weight issues. And they're like, and their family's telling them, hey, you can't be 600 pounds anymore, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna die. And then they decide, they're like, okay, I have a purpose now. For my health sake and for my family, I'm gonna exercise and exercise. And we see these successful stories everywhere, right? Yes. People losing weight. Or someone says, you know what? You know, I'm gonna finish school. Right? It's my purpose. Right? Or someone might say, you know, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and that with purpose. I mean, some people might say, I'm going to read the Bible. You know, if you have never read the Bible through the whole thing, you know, within a year, you're like, I'm going to do that. Right? And I'm going to make sure I'm going to pass out tracks every single day. You know? Like those type of purpose, people change. Right? But when it comes to prayer life, you have to have purpose. Amen. So you got to like start telling yourself, it's my purpose to really spend time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. No games, no playing around. And it can't be just, you know, one time only, right? I mean, at least having once is better than nothing, right? But from what I understand, in the morning when you pray and in between, a lot of things do happen in between. So nighttime, wouldn't it be a good thing to, you know, start talking to someone that you love? Amen. So it's a good analogy, right? Yes. When you guys were in love, I'm sure you guys still are, right? Married Amen. people. Amen. So you, why is it so quiet? I'm sure probably people are hearing in the, you know, <laughs> online, it's like, oh, maybe it's muted or something. No. So when you guys are in love, I guarantee you don't talk to the person you love just once in the morning, right? All right, it's breakfast time. It's, you know, 8 o'clock before we start all of our things. Let's talk to each other. And I'm like, okay. And you don't talk to that person the rest of the day? You weren't like that. No. You try to find as much time as possible to talk to that person, yes. right? And then it's not like complete day. Unless you guys said something to each other before you went to sleep, 
It's like gave you a closure, right? Yes. And then that's the first voice that you wanted to hear, and this is the last voice that you wanted to hear. That's how it's got to be with relationship with your Lord. Amen. He's the first person you want to talk to, and he's the last person you want to talk to. Yes. Right? More than your husband, more than your wife, more than your children, more than your best friends anywhere. Yes. He should be always number one. Amen. That should be your purpose. And if you are like that, then your prayer life will become persistent. It will become persistent. Man, I can't wait to talk to my Lord today. I mean, you are already talking to him on a daily basis. You have your Nehemiah prayers. But setting a time is so important. I mean, talk to anybody in a right relationship. You want to set a time for conversation. Like, I mean, I'm not like a therapist or anything, but just seeing how people behave. When man and woman, husband and wife, right, they set a time and have a conversation time, it's a lot better than they're always running around, you know, it's so busy, yeah. like this rat race, you know, hey, this, that, and that, and that. It doesn't really stick to your head. No. You have so many other things to do. You're going to work, studying, taking care of children. But if you set aside a time, you know, you, you get to actually really have a real conversation. Yes. Right? Yes. I'm telling you from experience because you can't be like talking to each other, doing certain things. No. Right? I'm cooking. Let's talk. This is the only time I, I have. Remember. Right? You know, I'm watching TV. This is the only time I have. Right? I'm doing, you know, this. I'm building something. This is the only time I have. No, you have some time to spend, you know, quality time with each other. Yes. And then, you know, your relationship improves. You get to understand each other more, more conversation. Right? But when it comes to actually spending time with the Lord, you don't have those times, Christians. You don't set aside. Right? Again, you can't be that emergency. You only go to the Lord when you need something. Yeah. Right? You gotta have a set of specific time on a daily basis where you spend time with Him. And you're gonna grow. And that's where your prayers not gonna be just, you know, thank you, Lord. Give me this, give me that. I pray for that person. Help me to have a great day in Jesus' name. No. There's going to be more meat to it. You're going to start talking about deeper things. You're going to start praising him more and more. Like, you know, the Bible in the book of Psalms and all the people that you see praising the Lord because their relationship was closer with him. So you have to, you know, pray purposely. You have to pray privately. And again, you have to pray passionately, right? You have to. You know, as a Christian, that's lacking. As time passes by, I have to check myself too. There's no more passion, all right? There's no more urgency. You know, there's no, like, desperation anymore. If today were the last day, and if Lord were to come back today, which we want him to come back, how would he find you when it comes to your prayer life, right? Did you pray like you should have? If you and I knew that Lord was coming tomorrow, I guarantee you, we're really going to pray. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're really going to spend time with the Lord, yeah. right? But shouldn't every day, like, Lord coming back today? Yes. Isn't that, you know, what, you know, crown of righteousness is all about? Yes. Expecting Lord to come back, like, at any moment? Right. Then you and I, honestly, don't deserve that crown. Mm -hmm. We don't even have a right relationship with Him, yeah. right? Then... That's part of it. You're spending more time with him, you know, and you want Lord to come back. Again, I'm putting another, you know, analogy to it. It's like, don't you think people who are in long distance relationship can't wait for the day they could actually see each other face to face? As the day gets closer and closer, don't you think the excitement gets bigger and bigger and bigger? Do you think that they get tired of each other, talking to each other? No. Like a day before? <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. They're going to be more excited. Yeah. <laughs> and then when the day comes, you know, all the you know, hours of their conversation is realized. And then, you know, there's true joy and happiness.
right? I mean, you think you're going to have a true joy and happiness when the Lord were to show up right now? I mean, of course, you want to, you love him, you will see him. But it's a different layers to it, yes. right? That's why the Lord fear God. I mean, we're, we don't live to just get rewards, but there's going to be, you know, capitalistic reward system there too. Amen. Because he loves his children, and he loves his children who follows his will, who spends time with him, right? Then you and I have great, great, you know, matter to really ponder and think about today. It's our first response, prayer with the Lord, right? It's our last response, prayer with the Lord. How is our heartbeat as a Christian when it comes to prayer life? It's the most vital lifeline that the Lord has given to us, where we could go to Him directly. Remember, it's a privilege. You know, don't take it for granted, right? If He takes it away because of your and my, you know, sinful ways, then we may never get it back. And then finishing with this, going back to it, to the pair of the unjust judge, you know, Lord will answer you speedily when it's the right time, right? When you're persistent in prayer, you know, Lord will answer, right? And when it's the right time, before you even know it, it's going to be like, that's it. And then you're like, oh, Lord, what happened? Well, thank you, Lord, right? Just like that. It could be your finance, it could be your health, it could be your relationship, anything. Lord wants to see persistency in your prayer life. Will you be a persistent Christian when it comes to prayer life, or will you stay as a lazy Christian who takes prayer and everything for granted? Let's pray. Dear Father, we neglect this most important part of our life, spending time with you, making sure that we have our relationship with you, Lord God. We're so excited and passionate and fervent about all the other things of life. But when it comes to spending time with you, praying persistently, consistently, Lord, we're lacking. I pray that every one of us will get right with you, Lord. You said pray without ceasing. I mean, we need to pray. But many times, we let the things of the world, the devil, and the flesh get in the way. Help us to refocus. Help us to think about purpose again, Lord, when it comes to prayer life. I pray that you bless everyone here who's listening and those who aren't able to make it for many, many reasons, Lord, whether it's health or any other issues, Lord. Please resolve it according to your will. I pray that you bless the rest of the day. And I, above all, Lord, we want to see you soon, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.